Hey, what's up, everybody? Chris Souter, Slinger Cat Outdoors, back with you again this afternoon. And for you guys that have been uh, kind of waiting on this one, this is like a additional Navionics show on uh, what we done the last week we was on. So, as always, I want to make sure and thank everybody for watching tonight. Uh, thank you guys for joining in. If this is your first time uh, joining the channel, thank you guys. And also, give me that thumbs up. Let me know that you guys can hear me good, see everything good, and everything is working good. But uh, tonight, we're going to jump right back into Navionics and kind of uh, show you guys how we caught fish on Lake Wiley. Um, in the last episode, we kind of I, we talked about tips and tricks on how to catch fish, how to catch catfish mainly, and how to break a lake down uh, using Navionics. But tonight, uh, we're going to do the same thing, but show you what we talked about, and then show you what we did and how it worked. So, as always, uh, if this, let's get this turned around here. Um, if you guys did not see the last show, make sure you go back and they give you an idea of everything that you need to do um, to break a lake down, give you some good tips and tricks and on what and how to do that. So, let's get this camera turned around and we'll get cracking tonight. All right, just that just a little bit. So uh, to start with uh, Navionics, as we did on the last one, you know, we, we showed you guys some tips and tricks on how to use Navionics, um, you know, how to measure the measure features, different little uh, features that you can do with Navionics and we showed you guys the lake that we was going to going to be fishing so let's zoom this back out here we'll go down here to uh, the border of North and South Carolina and we will zoom in The lake that we was fishing was right around Charlotte. It's called, it was a little lake called uh, uh, Lake Wiley. For anybody that's ever heard it, I know there's some guys that was watching that, watching that show and, and fish it theirself. So, so I got a lot of questions um, on this lake specifically and, and there's a lot of information that I learned. I learned a lot about how to uh, really how to catch perch. Uh, I mean, I've caught perch before, um, but not, I had a hard time. And for, you know, anybody that's around this area, if you guys are having a hard time catching perch, turn this back around. Uh, for you guys that have, you know, fish around these lakes like this, if you're, uh, one thing I want to talk about tonight is perch fishing. And I had a, I had trouble, you know, finding perch. Um, something I would highly recommend if you're around this area, uh, the Charlotte, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina border, is look up Jamie K Outdoors. Uh, those guys there, Blake and his father, they helped us out, uh, helped me out trying to find bait. Um, they actually had some gizzard shad, so I can't thank them guys enough for what they do. They keep bait. You know, on hand, um, you go there, buy it. Actually, Blake was nice enough. He was going to come to the boat ramp the next morning. So he just brought his brought bait with him uh, for us. Super easy, super nice. Worked out great because I didn't have a whole bunch of time. Uh, we was able to catch some perch out there, but uh, but I just did not like by, like being on there, you know, uh, without gizzard shad. I like gizzard shad, and they was able to hook me up with some of them. So let's get back to it. All right, so uh, the last, where we left off the last time was, you know, we was looking around, uh, oh, it's not, on the lake and just kind of, just kind of strolling around looking for um, humps and ditches and, and, you know, we had talked about uh, this area. This was part of the main lake area. You know, we talked about how, you know, it kind of intrigued me with these, nice steep ledges, humps, ditches, uh, deeper water, shallow water. 
you know, kind of a whole mix of things. Um, where I put in was a place called Allison Creek, which was, let's see here. If I can get things to work in tonight. Okay, so we put in right in right in here somewhere, I believe was the boat ramp. Nope. Okay, right there. Um, so if you guys can see my cursor, that is the area that we put in. Um, really nice creek, you know, went back super shallow. I was wrong. There it is. All I had to do is zoom out and it would actually showed me, right? <laughs> okay, so that's the boat ramp we used. Uh, good boat ramp, um, didn't have no issues. Uh, for anybody that is around this area, you know, make sure you, you check that boat ramp out. Now, I did mosey back in through here into this super shallow water. Uh, unfortunately, the fish had kind of moved out, out into a little bit deeper water. But one of the things we talked about you know, on the last show was having an understanding about where you're at on the lake uh, before you ever get there. So the good thing about, you know, going and studying the Navionics charts before I got there was I had a good idea of where I needed to be, you know, if something changed. Um, Benji Brown has a lot of history on this lake. So he, you know, he fished with me on Friday, helped me out a lot. Uh, it was a, it was a good time. We put some nice fish in the boat, but we found, we did try creeks. Uh, creeks didn't work out as well as what we thought they was going to. Um, so we had to start hitting some, some different areas. Now, one of the areas that we hit was main lake points okay and that is one of the things that you can you know capitalize on uh, using navionics before you ever get to a lake or body of water that you're on is whenever you start to figure out little things about uh, those fish are on main lake points or humps or shallow water or deep water then you know you have an idea of which direction you need to head Okay, and that's kind of what happened uh, as we as we started figuring things out. Okay, so we went and fished a couple creeks, and you know those didn't paint out. We caught fish, uh, but only only a few. So we had to change things up. Wanted to go a little bit deeper water, uh, try something different. So so what we did was we went out here into the main section of river and tried to find areas that were relatively close to this deeper water. Let me see if I can find a pin here. All right, so we was able to try to find some areas that were relative to this deeper water, but maybe had like a shelf or a flat and a point, okay? And we started dragging these points off the main river and started finding patterns. Uh, we would, we actually drug this point all the way down through here, had bites, you know, right there at the, at the point of it. And then didn't get another bite until we got down here to this little tiny inlet cove And then we, we picked up two or three fish right, you know, right off this point in this little area right in here, okay? But by having Navionics loaded on our sonar, having, you know, some sort of an idea of where to head, what to do, you know, by studying these maps, it gave us a little bit of an upper hand. So if you guys have any questions as we're going through this tonight and we're talking about this, make sure you, you know, hit me up put at Chris Souders. Um, I got the questions here on my phone that I'm looking at. I'm going to try to keep up with them. And, you know, 
we will answer and look at everything that we possibly can tonight uh, while we're sitting here. So as we went through the, the couple of days, you know, we was concentrating, started having to concentrate on main lake points. And then, you know, we decided to look uh, at this area. Made a little drag. And, you know, we, we started thinking, hey, this place has got a lot of these little main lake points on it. I'm going to zoom in here so you guys can see. It's relative to the deeper water. And I wish I had the gentleman's name, but there was a gentleman um, that watches the channel that was fishing, you know, right out in here, uh, out, in this, out in this deeper water. Um, absolutely caught a a giant uh one day while we was there we was dragging uh, we was making a drag from uh, the down river side up i guess or up the lake i guess you could say um and he was dragging on the other side and we'd caught some a few fish but he come over and he said uh he said he said you guys wouldn't happen to have something that could weigh a fish of 60 plus pounds and 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 uh you know we kind of had a tough day and here here comes this guy and he's like hey i know you he's like uh we uh you know i watch your channel he said you guys have you and and Dieter and and he named off a, a few other people that have really helped him out you know fishing and and how to catch fish and and uh he pulls this you know of course i go over in a boat with him and help him and and uh he pulls an absolute giant up and it ended up weighing in the high 50s so so i wish i could remember his name i can't i want to give him a shout out huge congratulations on such a great fish uh but uh but yeah so he was and he was fishing in this same area too you know um he was fishing he said he only caught two bites uh said it'd been real slow but uh you know one place that i didn't get to hit that I wish I would have. Um, we had drug across, across it this way. We'd made a drag up these points and drug across there, and we didn't pick nothing up. But I wanted, I, I really wish I'd have had more time. I'd like to have drug up that as well. That's a good point, Doc. Uh, so, Doc wants me to show you guys kind of how. You know how to pinpoint a hump um, or know what a hump is so if you got an avionics and you're you know you're zoomed out uh, something that I always look for is dark lines uh, you'll see these dark lines all the way through you know the body of water uh, different you know the darker that line the steeper the ledge is going to be okay now, if that line, for instance, I'm going to point this one out here, very, you know, uh, easy hump to find. But if we, we can notice that by those dark lines all the way around it, okay? So now we see that, we're going to take our cursor and we're going to start zooming in on it. No, Dieter, I did not find no uh, uh, muscle bed hump um, down there that I am aware of. Uh, if I did, I, I didn't know it, but, uh, but I would say that that would probably be a good place if you could find a really big muscle bed hump, um, especially for blue cats. But uh, this hump, this would be uh, what we was talking about, you know, zoomed out. You see these steep lines, the ledges, the contours, and then you have, you can see it's 40 foot over in here, you know, 42 foot comes up to uh, 10 to, looks like about 10 to 12 feet. Yeah, right there on top of it. You know, it comes up to about 10, 12 feet right there and then drops back down into, you know, uh, 30 foot over in here with some 20s. And you can see all the different contours uh, around that. You know, fish, especially 
uh, blue cats, channel cats. Um, flatheads do do too, but flatheads do not move as much as uh, a blue cat or channel cat does. And you know, blue cats and channel cats they use those contours, you know, daily, um, you know, constantly, all the time, and as a highway to move from wherever they're feeding, from wherever they're resting, uh, wherever they want to go, they like that security of having a, you know, a highway to travel, just as you and I do uh, whenever we travel from here to, you know, Lake Wiley or whatever. We want to get there the fastest, easiest route, and that's kind of what the simplest uh, way to describe this. So, so yeah, um, Doc, thanks for asking about that, and I'm sure uh, that helps somebody out. I'm, I'm positive. Now, if anybody has never fished Lake Wiley, I highly suggest you guys go down there and and do it. Uh, you know, fish the area. Uh, lots of, you know, lots of good fish in it. I would compare Lake Wiley to Watts Bar Lake in Tennessee. A um, lot of good quality fish. You know, something that I didn't see, a, you know, a lot of was really, really big fish. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it has plenty of bait. It's a, you know, has good camping around it. Uh, lots of, you know, recreation stuff for families to do. There's an amusement park. There's just so much, uh, you know, to, to do with a family around that, that it's just not, it's just not, you know, a fishing lake. All right, so somebody asked a good question, um, and they want to know, do we drag baits, anchor uh, around these ledges, around these humps? And it can be done, you know, uh, a couple different ways. You know, we, we drug baits primarily the entire time. Um, and what we would do is we would start, we would start down into, uh, let's go back up here to where we was at, actually. Okay, so we was over over in here dragging baits along this edge and decided that we wanted to drag, you know, this contoured area uh, to see what we could pick up. So what I did, what we decided to do was come down into this little trough right here. Drove down and we started right here so that we would pick up that point and then we just stayed right on the edge of those points as we continued up the lake all the way you know all the way up past here and then once we got to that flat you know that's when we turned and went across uh, but all of our fish were coming right in the areas of where the points dropped off and the points started back up okay so we was catching fish on both sides of these these little main lake points now the tops of them weren't rare, weren't real active and the flat outside of them were not real active but you know right there on it didn't take much either maybe just a foot or two of a point that would you know hold those fish and I had never caught bait You know, I'd never caught bait as deep as what I had whenever I was there. You know, I've caught perch and Santee Cooper, um, you know, uh, that were 10, 15, 20 foot deep. But the bait we were catching were, were 40 foot deep right on the bottom. And once again, you know, I can't help but I can't thank, you know, uh, Jamie Kay and those guys for helping us the way they did. All right, so uh, something, a couple other little things I want to point out um, for anybody that is that is new to Navionics. Uh, there's a couple of different things you can do. You can buy, you know, a lot of people talk about, you know, how much things cost. Uh, one of the questions that I had from the last um, tackle talk that we'd done was, hey, you know, I, I don't want to spend a bunch of money. I'm just getting in, into this. 
Is this something that is beneficial to me? It doesn't matter if you're a, a tournament angler, a weekend angler, um, a bank fisherman, a boat fisherman. Invest in the $10 Navionics app that you can download on your phone, and that will be something that, that will pay for itself, pay dividends for a long time with able to find areas that you can reach if you're a bank fisherman, areas uh, that you, you can take your boat or take your phone on your boat if you don't have a Navionics card in your sonar, and you know you, you can know where you're at by using your phone and your sonar at the same time. Uh, your phone is gonna, you know, with Navionics app is gonna tell you where you're at, and then you can uh, see what's on the bottom by whatever sonar you have. All right, so, yeah, uh, that's a good point, Roger. The This that I'm looking at right here, okay, um, if you just get on Google and you type in navionics.com, uh, this is what's going to pull up, okay, and you got Whenever you pull it up, it's going to come up, and there's just going to be like a Navionics home screen, okay? And let's see, actually, go ahead and take this back. So this is what it looks like when it comes up. Um, somebody asked a, a question about which one should they get. They they Googled it. Uh, I'm going to guess you looked at it in your app store, and a lot of them come up. This is what it looks like whenever I, I pull it up online. Okay, this is 100% free. Uh, you can get on here. You can look at it through your, uh, through your phone, uh, Safari, Google Chrome, uh, iPads you know, laptops like we're doing here tonight, any device that you have, you can get online and look at it. And then, so, so what you do from there is you hit the chart viewer, okay? And that's going to pull up what we were looking at just now. And a lot of this information is stuff that we you know, I want you to go back and look at from the last uh, couple weeks ago when we was looking at the tips and tricks on, you know, what to look at and how to look at it uh, and little features within the within Navionics. Now, something that, you know, I just seen uh, somebody pull up. Come on. Actually, I believe it was Doc that was talking about it. And he and it's something that I do whenever I'm fishing tournaments is if I'm if I'm looking at the sonar and Nick or somebody else is in the boat with me, you know, instead of them sitting there with nothing to do or uh, being kind of bored, you know, while we're just driving around looking for stuff, you know, they can look on their phone at that Navionics app. And say you finally do figure, you know, you start getting something, getting an idea, then they can help you uh, duplicate that. Okay, for for instance, I don't know if there's another place on this lake like this, but if we found this area right here and we really liked it, and we're like, man, you know, is there another place on this lake like that? Well, all we'd have to do is zoom out and and start looking. You know, and there may not be, or there may be. Um, here's another really big shallow area uh, right on uh, the main lake, just a really big point.
Now this this would be something that uh, you know I would actually pull up on an anchor and then cast down into here, and those fish are going to. This is kind of like a bottleneck area that if they want to come come from the main lake over into here, they're going to have to more than likely they're going to travel that ledge. All right, so now we was talking about <laughs> we was talking about uh sorry somebody said something there I kind of got a chuckle out of but uh you know finding another place on the lake like like that. So this would be a place that is similar to the other that we was catching fish on. You know, you have a couple different humps or different points right here off the main lake. So that's another Another feature, you know, like we was talking there, that if somebody's in the boat with you and, you know, you can. Or you can really cut your cut your time in half. Uh, that's a somebody just had a question about another another video idea. And that's a really good one that we could do later on about how to use this to map if you um, if you have the features on your on your sonar. Now I didn't make it up to this end of the lake. I really wish I would have had time. There's, you know, this lake is actually bigger than what most people would think. And it was a fun lake to fish. Uh, it was challenging, you know, it wasn't one of those places where you can just, uh, I was able to just go and, and put in and, and catch a bunch of fish. You know, it was something that was challenging. And, you know, that's part of fishing if, is, is the challenge. So something I really like about Navionics is the ability is the ability to find stuff on here. And then you can click on it, and sometimes it will have some sort of information of what it is. Um, and it doesn't. It just says, it just has an H. Oh, okay, it's an obstruction. So I'm going to guess that that is, there's something sticking that is kind of shallow or comes up kind of shallow right in there. Uh, tackling cats, he asked a question. He said, you know, these wide open areas with not very little to no contour, uh, do I like to fish those? There are certain times and certain ones you can find. And I'm sure that somebody that lives on this lake could probably, you know, point to, you know, a couple flats that would absolutely be better than others. Um, muscle beds, if you can find muscle beds on flats, that help, you know, that is good as well. But if it's a mud flat, those fish can't, will get up there and bury up in the mud and can be good, um, but me personally, I like to to find some sort of, you know, contour. So, uh, Muskrat Adventures, uh, go ask that question a little bit more in depth of what you're talking about. And if you guys would like to see me pull up, you know, a different lake or a different body of water and talk about that, uh, make sure you guys are leaving it in the comments. Now, uh, one of the things that was asked the last or a couple weeks ago was about the measuring feature. Uh, Bobby Parker, Hoover Reservoir. Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, for anybody that is fishing around the, the Ohio 
area or if you're on here and you're watching your, your live in Ohio boarding area. You know, Hoover Reservoir is actually getting known to, to have uh, some really nice blue cats. And, you know, they are growing. Um, they've been stocking those blue cats in that lake for a while now. And, you know, they're, they're really starting to take off. So one of the features on here is the measuring feature. Okay. Now, we showed this last week, but it comes up with two pins. And you can kind of, before you ever get there, have an idea of how long, you know, this drag is going to be. So if it's three tenths of a mile long or, you know, half a mile long, um, and you're going at a half a mile an hour dragging. So you know it's going to take you about an hour, hour and a half to make that drag. Okay, so you can already start to do your time management. Uh, somebody asked a question about Hoover Reservoir, how big it was. I'm not sure about actually how big it is, but I know it's ha it has a, uh, a size limit on a motor um, and the size limit on a boat. Forty seven hundred acres. Thanks, Roger. All right, so you know, uh a couple different things you guys have sent questions about asking are the tracks. Uh you know, obviously I don't have the have it the app on, you know, on you know on my laptop. Uh these features some of these features you have to have uh have to have the app downloaded for, uh, you know, all the markers and the features and uh, map options. You know, you can change satellite uh, terrain. That's just going to zoom this out so you guys can see that. So it's kind of going to give you a Google Earth uh, view of it. And then a terrain view of it. Or you can do no overlay. I prefer the no overlay me personally and you can also you know if you have uh, if you have a, a body of water that you're going to and it has tides or you want to know the weather if you have this app you have that information a lot of guys ask me about the James River and it being a tidal river um, you know, two ways, uh, Navionics app, you can have that, or you can uh, see it on your Lowrance units. If you guys use Lowrance, then, you know, you can, it'll have it right on there uh, as far as, you know, what the tides are doing. So if you guys are... Uh, you know, doing different things. There's there's so many different things you guys can do with these. Um, you can, if you make your tracks and your routes, you know, you can, you'll know how many, how many gallons of fuel it's going to take you, the speed at which you're going to have to go. Um, you can get your temperatures. Uh, you can change everything from kilometers to miles, all that good, just so much good information, you know, on these, on Navionics that I highly, highly, highly recommend you guys take the time to sit down and play around with it. Um, you know, something that I do is if if I'm sitting, and instead of looking at Facebook or Instagram, if I'm wanna I'll break down a body of water, I will really start, you know, Navionics up and, and see what I can find. Uh, Tackling Cats asks, do I ever use Google Earth along with Navionics? Yes. So sometimes, you know, so, uh, a good tip I could give you guys is that if your body of water would not have, navi you know, the Navionics like we see here, it's still going to have some sort of Navionics, but it may not be as detailed as what, what you're seeing here. By using Google Earth, along with like a topographical map from that area, 
uh, or a highway map, you can put little details together. So if you have a steep bank and it's rock um, and the topographical map shows that that steep ledge off that hill um, is, is, you know, how steep it is, well, then that's going to continue down into the water. Um, so just because that you don't have this on your body of water, don't use it as your only resource. Add two or three resources together to give yourself as much information as you possibly can from those areas. Mike Greenwell, uh, find ship shows barge traffic on a high river and on the Green River. Actually, yes, uh, Mike, and that's a good, that is a, that is a very, very good, you know, comment and uh, something that, you know, I'd like to share with these guys. I've used it before. I don't use it a lot, uh, but find ship is actually something that if you're in an area, you know, that you're wanting to run and run fast, but you know it has barge traffic on it, well, with that app, say it's really foggy, that app is going to tell you where that barge is located in some sort of, you know, area. And that way you kind of know how many, how, what's coming up as you go down the river. It's a good one. All right. All right. So hopefully, hopefully you guys enjoyed, you know, seeing, you know, how we broke that, broke this leg down. Um, you guys, if you don't follow me on social media, I posted some pictures a, a week or so, you know, about a week, maybe two weeks ago. I'm not for sure about how, uh, you know, the fish that we caught out there, we had a good time, caught some really nice fish. The biggest fish we caught out there was like a 40 pound blue cat and then got, you know, another uh, high 30. So spending time doing your homework on Navionics here at the house, nice and warm, uh, you know, it's gonna pay dividends. And I, I highly, highly recommend you take advantage of this, Google Earth, um, you know, all that, all that stuff to make sure that you guys have an upper hand before you ever go there. Uh, we all spend a lot of money, um, you know, putting the hard work in here will definitely pay dividends there. So uh, if you guys are enjoying the information I'm giving, make sure you share. If it's your first time here and this is helping you, make sure you subscribe. And as always, uh, you know, try to get out new videos each and every week. Uh, got a good video getting ready to come up and hopefully it'll be out tomorrow or the next day. But till next time. We'll catch you guys on the water. Hope you all have a blessed week and a safe week. Take care.